Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with iSoftStone, and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of a Windows PowerShell script that uses the power tools for OpenXML to generate a Word 2007 document that contains document property values from other Word 2007 documents. I'm in Microsoft Visual Studio 2008, and I've got the PowerShell script open that we're going to be taking a look at today. It's named process.docprops.ps1. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the script's doing. First thing we see is we have some methods here, some functions, um, which we'll take a look at in a second as we start walking through the script. But first thing that the script does is it calls the export-openxml word processing power tools from OpenXML commandlet. Um, and it creates a document named summary document.docx in the current folder that has a single paragraph in it with this heading, document titles, creators, and descriptions. What the summary document.docx file is going to contain is these document properties, titles, creators, and descriptions pulled from a set of other Word documents in the same folder. So after creating the Word document, summary document.docx, the script next calls the git open XML style commandlet to get the style part from a template document. A template document, which we'll look at in a little bit, is just a Word document that has a heading one and heading two styles, some text formatted with those styles in it so that we can pull the style part out of that and use that then to pass to or pipe to the set open XML style commandlet on the summary document um, to set the style part so that the summary document has access to the heading one and heading two styles. Uh, once we've done that, we get the style part again. We pipe that through from the template document. We pipe that through to the set open XML content style to set um, the content or rather the formatting in that first paragraph up here, our heading, as a heading one format. Um, so we specify using our insertion point argument uh, or rather parameter here um, that we want to set the first paragraph in the document in the body um, to the heading one style. Then the script next calls a helper function called add content to add a single paragraph um, with some text in it here, the word overview, to our summary document that we're creating. If we come up here and take a look at the add content function, we can see again it accepts our two arguments, the document to modify and the text to insert. And then it goes ahead and builds up um, a paragraph with a run with some text in it and combines that with the text to insert to create a string here that basically is our, our markup that we want to add to our document. And then it calls the add open XML content uh, power tools for open XML commandlet um, specifying the name of the document and then the path to the part that we want to modify or add the content to. And in this case here we're adding it to the main document part. And our insertion point then is going to be um, to add it as the last paragraph in the body of the document. Um, and then we go ahead and specify that our content is our string that we built up here. So that adds then the text as, as the final or last paragraph in the document. So if we come back down here, then after adding that content, um, we then do what we did up above and we go ahead and get the style part from the template document and then we call set open XML content style specifying that paragraph that we just added now, the second paragraph, and telling it that we want to have a heading two format applied to it. And then the next thing we do after doing that, setting the style and the heading, is to call the add content helper function again on the summary document, and we add another paragraph here with just some text describing what the document contains. And as I said before, it contains the title, creator, and description properties of the documents in the current directory. Um, now the next thing the script does is it calls a helper function called add summary table, passing in the name of the document to modify. So the summary document we're going to create is going to have these document properties that are pulled from the other documents uh, basically stored inside a table or rendered inside a table uh, with three columns for the title, creator, and description. So we need to add that table to our summary document. So we call the add summary table helper function here. And let's take a look at what that does. So it takes one argument, which is the document to modify. And then it goes ahead and reads a, an XML fragment for the table elements uh, from a, a template file named table.xml. Um, so it uses the GC component, PowerShell component, to read from the table.xml file, and then it uses the string join method here on the new line, uh, new lines, to basically join all the content from the template file into a single string, uh, which we then go ahead and add. Uh, to the Word document, uh, to the document part on our new summary document that we're creating via the add open XML content. If you go take a look at the table.xml template file, we can see that all that it is is just some standalone, it's a standalone fragment here of um, the W colon table and child elements that are required. So we have our table properties, table grid with three columns, and then we add a single row essentially for our headers for our columns for title, creator, and description. 
so then I, like I said then it goes ahead and adds then that string um, as the last paragraph in the document so now we have a table with one row in it so then after adding the summary table the next thing we do is you start getting ready to process the source documents that we're going to pull the document property values from so we uh, use the get open XML document commandlet here specifying that we want to look or we want to get all of the documents in the current folder that have this name pattern here test star dot docx we open them for read only so we get our list or a collection of documents here um, and then we iterate through those and so on our the current source doc we get the core file properties part which is the part of the document that contains the properties uh, that we want to work with and we get a stream on that um, and then we use we create a, a stream reader on it we read to the end um, of the stream so of the core file properties part and we read that into an XML object using the XML cast here and stuff that off into this variable here and then we close our document um, and now the cool thing about the using the XML object here is that we can then treat the elements within our markup within our XML that we just read as properties um, off that so what we have here off the XML that we read is there's a core file properties element and then each of the properties under there are stored as additional XML elements now we can just access those as properties so what we do is we call a helper method name add summary table row which we'll take a look at in a second specify the name of the document and then we get the values of the title creator and description core file properties off the XML that we read in um, from the core file properties part on the current document that we're working with so if we go take a look at the add summary table row method or function we can see again it takes the, as arguments the document to modify the title creator and description property values so it does a similar thing as the previous helper function where it reads uh, an XML or a W uh, colon TR fragment from a template file named table row dot XML so again table row now just like with the table um, template file here has um, the markup in it for a single row so we have a row with our three columns um, and we have placeholders uh, for the values uh, for the text in each of those columns and we'll see in a second that we're going to replace these placeholders so what we first do is we go ahead again and we create our string variable with that markup and then we replace those placeholders we just saw with the actual values so we do um, on the string to add we do call the replace specifying that we want to replace the title creator and description description placeholders with the argument values that we passed in and then we go ahead and take our string to add now which contains the actual values and we pass that through to the add dash open XML content again um, adding it um, to the last as the last table row in the table the single table that we have in our document so that's the last thing that the that the code does after iterating so it iterates through each of the documents doing that same thing pulling in the title creator and description properties and adding them to rows in our table Okay, so before we run our PowerShell script and try it out, let's go take a look at those temp some of those template files we were talking about. So here we are in our process doc props folder. We have our PowerShell script here that we're looking at. We have the two XML uh, files here for our, our template files for our fragments, for our markup, for our document, for creating the table and table rows. And we have our template document. If we open that up, we see it just has some content formatted uh, for the heading one style and the heading two styles so that we can pull the style part from it. And then we have three documents that match the um, test star.docx name pattern that we're going to be working with. If we open one of them up, we can see we have under our document properties, um, we have our author or creator or title, and then some comments here, or document abstract essentially. Um, so we're going to be pulling those property values from test one, test two, and test three. Okay, so let's go ahead now and run our PowerShell script. So I'm going to come out to the desktop where I have a link to Windows PowerShell version one. I'm going to choose to run it as administrator. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can set the execution policy to allow me to run scripts as well as add uh, power tools for OpenXML to this session of PowerShell. So first I'm going to change folders uh, to the directory that contains my PowerShell script. Next I'm going to add power tools to this session of PowerShell. And then I'm going to set the execution policy to allow scripts to be run in this session of PowerShell. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and run my PowerShell script that we were just looking at. And it looks like it ran successfully. So now if I come back over here, we see that I have my summary document now that has been created. Um, if we go ahead and open it up, 
we see we have our new Word document here with my titles document or document titles, creators, and descriptions header formatted using the heading one style. I have an overview heading here formatted for heading two. I have my descriptive text of what the document contains, and then I have a table that was added with three columns for title, creator, and description, uh, with three rows in it, one for each row, one row rather for each of the source documents that we processed. And we have the title properties that was pulled from those source documents, test one, test two, and test three. The creators that we pulled from the author properties of the documents and then description text here that was pulled off the comments property from each of the documents so it looks like our script worked correctly and successfully created our summary document here based on the property document values from our source documents so by using power tools for open xml um, it was pretty easy for us to do some simple document processing where we created a new document and then iterated through uh, several other source documents pulled the uh, document property values, specific document property values from the source documents and added them to a table in our new summary document.